How's it going everyone? Welcome back to a, another day over here with all the projects and buses and Dale where we're just getting things done and getting things rolling. Happy Sunday everybody. Yep, happy, kind happy. Kind of a gloomy day, but we can't let that stop us. Nope. No rain. Nope, no rain, Cloud, clouds work. Clouds work, we like clouds. I was just saying we got Gina's bus moved over here for the day, my bus is here. The van's here, Chris is over there. Sorting through some more wood. Sorting through wood. Everybody's busy, so that's all that really matters. Yep. <laughs> here we got Gina's bus moved over here. I'm gonna be working and finishing up the solar panels right here because all the parts came in. And we also have the fuel filter for her engine. Um, so I'm gonna go through and try to see if changing and flushing out the fuel system is gonna help her out with the, her starting issues. If you haven't seen the previous videos, we already changed the battery and a couple of other components on her bus to try to just help it start a little easier. Something's going on. It does start, obviously we drove it over here, uh, but it's just a really rough start. So we're just trying to test out uh, different things that we think might be going on. Dale's over here getting the flooring in his bus and uh, cutting up a whole bunch of wood. And my dad is going through this huge pallet. We have a whole bunch more wood to mill, don't we? It's gonna look nice in Dale's bus and whatever we do inside the cottage. Natural wood is well weathered. Yeah, let's take a sneak peek of what it's gonna look like in here. Of course, all this wood that's on the ceiling now still has to be planed, I was just, Wanted to make sure I got the width right. I think at five inches, it's gonna work out almost perfectly. I'm still debating as to which finish I wanna use. Uh, I'm leaning more towards this, go ahead and plane this down to a lighter color, simply because I, I, I really like the floor. Don't get me wrong, but I think a little bit of lighter lightness in the bus would help it out. So that's what we're leaning on. So walking through Dale's bus, uh, he has, oops, he does have all the flooring in. So that's kind of pretty much done. It's gonna get taped off when we spray foam and then he's carrying it all the way up through the top. So, you know, we are gonna have to remove it because the spray foam has to get put in. But like Dale said, sometimes you just get so excited wanting to see what it's gonna look like that you just get a little antsy and get moving ahead. That's right, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Nope. Wait, eight screws and it's all down. And even in his bus, which is a low top Thomas bus, uh, I can still stand, I'm 5'10", and my head is just not touching. Uh, so it's still gonna work out for me and it's still really gonna work out for Dale because I think Dale's probably like an inch shorter than me. If you're over six foot, you know, you can come on over, hang out with Dale, but. But sit on the, uh bed or the yeah. dinette when it's finally put in or yeah. you know yeah or you could sit in the captain's chair well no you know this is just like the campfire this is like you can sit here until the head slacker wants to sit down then you got to get up i'm excited I yeah mean, I'm, it's getting to the point where i want them gang spray foam guys get over here give us an estimate tell us when we can bring it or when they can come and let's get it done hopefully january or february to get so dang cold mike won't want to stay up here <laughs> Come down to Florida, we'll get some parts ordered, and do a little solar in the sunshine down here. Well, since everyone's doing something, I gotta get doing something. So we're gonna hop underneath Gina's bus here and get going on it. Gina, you know, what are you up to today? You gonna sand? I'm gonna try and get the rest of the sticky residue. That's all that's left is the sticky residue. The sticky residue. I mean, there's the front that has to be sanded, but that's yeah. all you. No, that's all me. <laughs> she, she's kind of scared of heights. So I'm gonna take care of kind of everything up here at this topper level. But yep, so sanding, painting, engine, wood, Dale. There you go. Well, we got the filter in. And what we're going to do really quick before we put the shroud back on is we're going to take a marker and we're just going to date when we replace this so that in the future, um, I'm most likely not gonna be the person changing this. So if Gina is traveling around the country and she goes to another mechanic shop, the mechanic's gonna be able to look at it and he's gonna know when it was replaced at least. Um, so, you know, at least she can change it on time or at least have someone change it when the date comes around or the mileage. And uh, it's all gonna be recorded right there on the filter at least. So it starts on its first turn now, but did it do that after we ran it? Because we've already started it today. Once it's been started and ran a little, it'll start normally throughout the day. Tomorrow morning will be the real test. If it doesn't start tomorrow morning, we know that wasn't the problem. 
So we're not 100% sure if it's gonna necessarily fix the problem. What me and my dad wanna do is rip apart this filter though, because I wanna see how dirty it actually is. Uh, so we wanna cut it open and just take a look on the inside. It might be interesting, Gina. What are you thinking? Um, yeah, I think it's definitely the problem. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. What do you think, Supervisor? I think you made a wise choice there. I think somebody should have made that choice a couple years four, ago. Four or five years ago, maybe. <laughs> what, what? Well, it may have not solved the problem. Uh, we don't necessarily know just yet. There's some other things we have to do. But, I mean, the filter, it costs very little money. You got to replace it anyway. So, if it solved the problem, great. If it didn't, she's got a new filter. And that's still great. next thing I want to get going on is this solar system. I want to get these wires penetrated uh, back through the side of the bus so we can get this thing hooked up. Well, I'm just about to get started on this solar. Dale has been milling all this wood into a bunch of five inch wide pieces that will eventually go into the roof of his bus. I've got to spend the next week just planing it down a little bit. Hope I got enough. I may cut two or three more pieces just to make sure I, you know, I don't come up short in the roof. I don't think I'm going to but I'd rather go ahead and cut it now while I'm all hot and sweaty. So if you haven't caught a previous video, uh, all of this wood is local Adirondack white pine. Uh, we've ordered in quite a few slabs of, or not even slabs, a bunch of pallets of slab wood that was from a local sawmill. So those one by fives that you're seeing back there, at one point were just these big side slabs. We have uh, up to 12 inches all the way down to three inches. So we've been just milling out this wood to use it on Dale's bus. A really interesting thing about all of this wood and what Dale's doing, um, there is a lot of labor that goes into, you know, milling out this wood. But in terms of Dale's bus, we're gonna pretty much do almost his entire bus wood-wise for Dale, less than $200 probably. Oh, way less. Yeah, way less than, way less than $200. Dale pretty much has more in the three pieces of subfloor than he does in all this wood right here. Now, obviously, it took how many days now have you been doing this? Probably. Who's counting when you're having fun, Mike? Look We're not. It. Don't I look like I'm having man glitter everywhere? And, and you're worried about what day it is? Some sweat labor going into this wood here, and Dale's gonna pretty much get a really beautiful cabin looking bus for a very low cost. We got this guy in here so that the wires can now pass safely into the bus and waterproofed. And when Gina's panel's up, it will look like this. And then when it closes, it will be just above the inlet and then her 30 amp right here. So then the last part to this whole project is just connect all these wires. It's now just literally connect, 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 and it's done. But this is really fun that this is now all completely done because now Gina, she's just set up and set up right. So that's kind of the good feeling here. When she showed up, uh, she didn't have a 30 amp. She just had the wires passing through the 30 amp. Um, and now we have a full 30 amp transfer switch installed and we have our wires run through a solar uh, waterproof box. The next thing is gonna be heading inside the bus and then getting all these wires actually connected. And like I said, just start plugging them in. It's official. Gina's entire solar system is completed and kind of the rebuild. We've got our solar completely wired back in. I just put this on off switch uh, and this 300 amp fuse in between her battery and inverter that wasn't there before. Um, so now she has a safe system. There are fuses where they're supposed to be. Um, there's on off switches where they're supposed to be. Um, so at this point, she doesn't have to worry about anything overheating over, you know, burning or just, I don't know, just Gina, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, which is really a nice part. So now that I can close this up, we can give her her bus back. I am still gonna be doing other projects inside the bus. Um, we have a diesel heater showing up so that I can help her replace that. The one that she currently has burnt up, so she needs to replace it. I think there's a few other things. I mean, we're gonna be painting the outside and stuff, but for now, I can give Gina her bus back until the parts come in for the next project. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll go see what Dale's up to or get splitting some wood or 
I don't know. There's always so many things. We'll go see who needs help. All right, we just had group discussion time of what we want to do next. We're going to move Dale's bus. We just moved Gina's bus, which is behind the van, and we're going to start working on the roofs. We want to get them painted with the silicone paint, so we're going to get them all sanded down. But Gina, Gina, we've been having this conversation for a long time about what's bigger, the short bus or the van. Since we have a van and we have the bus, we might as well put them next to each other. To answer your question, Gina has a, what is your bus? It is a 2003 GMC 3500 Savannah, and it's 20 feet bumper to bumper. Someone measured it. Actually, Larry Berry measured it. So Christina's van right here is a 2017 Ram Promaster 159 wheelbase. Christina, if I said that wrong, go you know yell at me in the comments or something. And my bus is definitely longer. By like a foot though. Still, I'm not saying, even. It is still longer. Oh come on. If, if we you like look just up take the specs, this is 19 feet long. We'll take your bumper off and it's pretty much the same. We'll take your bumper. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't. I wish you wouldn't take the bumper off. No, we're just gonna take it off and leave it off. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> look at look at the bright side. You won't have to paint it then. <laughs> <laughs> Short bus versus a van. I don't know. In my opinion, it's like you're within six inches to a foot. So there you go. Now we got them back to back. Wider. It's definitely wider by at least a foot. I would bet I know buses are about seven foot six, so this van. We could, uh, you know, we could get a tape measure. This is way more fun, though. There you go, Dale. Use some Adirondack wood. Yeah, there you go. And that's to the wide part. Well, now that we uh, officially proved, you know, just just proved to Gina that the van is, I think, arguably a pretty much the same length, and then the width. The buses are definitely at least a foot wider. All right, so now that we moved all the vehicles, I actually have to now put them back where they were. So uh, that was fun, but <laughs> now we got to move everything back. Yeah, now we gotta actually get to work. <laughs> We're about halfway through the roof. Uh, what we're trying to do is get it completely sanded down, get all of the old caulk and uh, unfortunately like pine sap that's fallen from the trees, just get everything off so that we can get a good clean painting surface uh, because we need a clean surface for the um, silicone roof sealant to actually work and attach. But what that's gonna do is two things for Gina. It's gonna create a full seal because she has quite a few different leaks on the roof, unfortunately. And then the second thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna help lower the temperature of the bus because by putting this on there, uh, it does reflect quite a bit of the sun's uh, heat and it will then result, of course, in her getting a lot less heat into the bus. And unfortunately, her bus isn't really insulated besides the factory insulation. Uh, so anything we can do to keep the heat out of the bus is gonna be beneficial to her. And if you might have noticed in the back of the B-roll, one of my friends stopped by that I met a long time ago at a tiny house festival and uh, he's gonna be visiting for a little bit. Hi, John. Thanks for standing directly. Me, there we go. Okay. Yeah, let me get you in the shadow. It's Hi, like John. Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming by and helping out and, you know, just needlessly just lending a helping hand to Gina and the projects. It's about teamwork. Yes, yeah, so that's right. That's is this, right. Is this for that face tube thing? Yeah, this is that face tube thing. <sighs> that Twitter gram that you kids are always on? Yes. Yeah, stay off my lawn. Back to sanding, as Dale would say. Oh, wait, no. Why are you still filming? Who's filming? Why are you still filming? Why am I still filming? No, I don't know. That's what Dale always says to oh, me. Oh, why are you still filming? <laughs> Back to sand. We got most of the roof done. I have to do a bit more sanding around the fantastic fan in the back and then deal with some of the uh, caulking issues up here because I really need to get it as clean as possible. All the residue, all the caulk uh, really needs to be gone to make sure that the paint sticks correctly. But while I'm up there, uh, John's finished up his sanding part and he's now helping Dale over here just plane out the ceiling. But Gina here, Gina's been just, just been going away at the mess. front Mike's grill. No, no, no. <laughs> She's trying to clean up the front grill because um, she wants to repaint it. It was kind of all faded. You can kind of see 
without her even painting it, it just, it's, it's just seen some miles, you know? Uh, so Gina's been sanding this thing up and is gonna be getting it painted, and then we can put it back on the front of her bus, and then your bus will have a smile again. Yay! And not just like a big, empty I'm grill. a little excited to see it painted. Like, I was kind of like, oh, this sucks, I hate it. Like, but now I'm like, I can't wait to see what it looks like painted. I know, I know. <laughs> it's so sad, Gina was just saying how you know, on YouTube, when you see people paint buses, or even you see on my videos when we paint buses and stuff, it looks like it happens in like two seconds. But Gina is now coming to find out that like 95% of paint work is prep, and then like literally it gets painted in like no time. So this is one of those moments in life, like I have a lot that no, it doesn't take 10 minutes. No, no, <laughs> it yeah. Gina's like, I want to go back and watch the time lapse on YouTube. That was more fun. It really was. <laughs> it really, really was. You know, you can probably still hear the planer going in the background. That planer runs like 24-7. 24-7. Roof is done, grill's painted, and Dale's making a mountain of wood. If you were trying to figure out what Dale was saying, he wasn't saying anything, he was just moving his mouth on camera. Funny guy. Uh, next thing we're moving on to is we're starting to grind out all of these different locations. Uh, where we're eventually going to be putting uh, back in the mirrors or and welding them shut because we're not putting the bubble mirrors back in. And, you know, as John, thanks John, I'll as do. as John was doing this, uh, you know, and sanding and grinding, <laughs> what we determined is that there was this this nice little patch on the front that we were like, hey, we should sand it out. John determined that it's actually just a hole that someone bonded, like a big hole. So what we're gonna do real quick is pull off this heat shield in the front and then kind of see what's actually going on on the inside and what we're gonna have to do to repair it. Gina's bus does have quite a few dents on it, unfortunately, it's lived a life. You know, this, this poor bus has lived a life. Uh, so we got some dents in the top, uh, the back corner's kind of dented in, and I'm not gonna be able to help her fix everything just because, I mean, some of this is some pretty major body work. Um, not structural, just, you know, aesthetic. So we're gonna try to fix what we can fix. I don't know, it looks fine. It drives. You can still boondock in this thing. Character. There's a character. lot of character. Gina. You say dense, I say character. 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 I like that. We're gonna go oh, character. Let's go see uh, how much character this hood has now. Sounds like it has a lot of character, <laughs> and that was not my guess. John yeah, got the done. inside ripped apart and we found out that there's like this nice little like metal part that's like shielding whatever happened. Uh, so we decided to peek in there and what we realized is, is uh, back in the day, at some point, someone wanted to fix this and they just globbed a bunch of Bondo in this hole that's right here. Um, and I just put my screwdriver into it and it never cured because the Bondo was too thick. So your Bondo is not meant to be like a half inch thick. Um, it's really like less than an eighth inch. It's not, yeah. Don't fill holes with Bondo like that. That's not the right stuff to use. So now that we have a hole here, we're gonna have to like grind it, weld it, and, and kind of patch it up for Gina. But it's okay. Just wanna go on record. A lot of the dents and stuff are my fault. This was not. This came this way. <laughs> like, this I didn't do. A lot of the stuff you can blame on me. This one. All right, Gina. Me. We'll fix every dent that you didn't make, but all the ones you made. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get my welder, and John's gonna keep grinding that up. We're gonna see if we can't get this thing fixed up by the end of the day. I think we can get it. Okay, we got our hole cut right here where it's all back to good metal. Uh, the problem was is that it was just super thin and I couldn't weld it. So we cut it back to where it was no longer rusted um, and it was all good thick metal and I made a patch for that spot. So we just got to insert it in and then we can weld it shut. Dale keeps yelling at me saying he wants to uh, show me some sawdust angels. I think this has something to do with him not coming back for winter. You're all the time trying to get me to come back for winter. And you what? know that's not probably going to happen. It's going to happen, Dale. We're going well, to get you back from winter. But until then, I figured, you know, 
I've only made like snow angels once in my life. So I figured, what the hell? Sawdust angel. Is that is it the same? I think it's about the same, it's just not as cold. And you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Well. Yo, we should take the snowmobile and put it in the sawdust and see what happens. <laughs> Does snow stick on you like this? Yeah, it does. Or is it just me? No, it sticks on you. It just starts to melt and then your clothes get all wet and... Oh, and as an old man, I can't get up again. <laughs> I'll just lay back down in the snow. <laughs> this is actually pretty, you know, if you had a blanket, this would like be pretty comfortable. You know, as a crew, somebody should be going to get one. I'm, I'm on break. <laughs> With him. Okay, well, I'm on break. I don't care what y'all do. <laughs> all right, Dale. Dale, I'm gonna go back to welding. Right at the end of welding, it just absolutely started pouring. So I think this rain is what's gonna probably end our day here. Uh, John did come up to visit, so we do wanna hang out with him. We're gonna take him out to a local restaurant tonight uh, and just kinda catch up with him, see what he's been up to after the last few years. Dale and I, we haven't seen John in- Probably almost two years at two least. Two years, yeah. I mean, we pretty much cleaned up. We got, uh, well, I didn't actually do a thing. Dale milled all of his wood and planed it all out. And I think you're pretty much ready, ready to go almost with all that. I hope so. No? No, he's not. Okay, we're not even gonna ask him. We're just gonna move on. Next video. Oh. And Gina, uh, we got, you know, her bus pretty much sanded and all. The rain is washing it for us right now. Thank and then you. we pretty much can get started on painting, you know? I'm very excited. Yeah, I know. She just painted the grill and it's all like perfect now. <laughs> uh, so in the next one, we're probably gonna be getting on some painting. Uh, keep milling some wood over here with Dale. Yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Gina, you gotta say goodbye. Oh. Bye. Sorry. I was on my phone, obviously. <laughs>